Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna learn intermediate microeconomics two in five minutes. Let's go. So in intermediate microeconomics one, this is more about modeling consumer and producer behavior. In the second part, the key focus is on market structures as an environment of transaction. Though often content from university to university differs with regards to special topics, in general, an intermediate microeconomics two class must contain the following three topics. General equilibrium theory, where we go through the Edgeworth box in the context of an exchange economy and the fundamental welfare theorems. The second point is on monopoly, where we give an overview of price discrimination, first, second, and third, though we only really calculate the third. And oligopoly, where we go and we talk about Cournot, Bertrand, and Stackelberg oligopoly. Stackelberg meaning sequential, quantity, and price leadership type of oligopoly. So let's talk about the Edgeworth box. So the Edgeworth box is a visual tool for understanding how exchange occurs in an economy when there is no production and only a fixed number of goods. It illustrates the most basic environment of exchange with only two consumers with endowments. We can think of this as two kids trading on a playground chocolate and soda. So what's illustrated here is the case where we have two consumers with Cobb Douglas like preferences, which are symmetric. They trade where the marginal rate of substitution of a is equal to the marginal rate of substitution of B. From this, we derive our contract curve, which is given by this red line here, which communicates the set of Pareto optimal outcomes. So let's talk about our fundamental welfare theorems. And these are the deepest concepts in economics, meaning that people on the graduate level and beyond go in so much depth about them. They are usually said as follows on the undergraduate level. The first welfare theorem is that every competitive equilibrium is Pareto efficient. This means let markets do their work and a Pareto efficient allocation will be realized. That means we'll go and have any allocation and we'll sum end up somewhere on that red line there. The second welfare theorem is that every Pareto optimal allocation is a competitive equilibrium in some artificial economy, meaning that if we move a longer contract curve, we can find a competitive equilibrium that supports it. Let's move on to price discrimination. So in general, we're exposed to three different types of price discrimination, that being first degree, second degree, and third degree price discrimination. First degree price discrimination discriminates across quantity and across groups of consumers. Second degree uh, price discrimination only discriminates across quantity, while third degree price discrimination uh, discriminates across groups. The standard problem for third degree price discrimination is the following. Where our where a producer is choosing to go and maximize their profits with reference to the quantity sold in each market. Our producer is able to separate these markets. In intermediate microeconomics too, we're introducing the concept of imperfect competition between firms. This means that they go and they impact the prices and profits that are in play. So we like to think about things in the following framework, where firms go and compete over quantity, they compete over price, and whether they're making their choices simultaneously or sequentially. So um, for the most part, Bertrand equilibrium and price leadership in this context, unless we're talking about differentiated products, is largely ignored. But that's something that's not discussed. Instead, we go and we discuss mostly Cournot equilibrium and Stackelberg. So for Cournot equilibrium, we need to first think about the structure of our problem. We have two firms. They are firm one is in control of the quantity he produces and firm two is in control of the quantity that he produces. They could have the same cost structure or differing cost structures. It doesn't really matter. And they face the same inverse demand. Step number one is that we're going to take the first order conditions of the above equations and derive the reaction curves Q1 as a function of Q2 and Q2 as a function of Q1. And step two, we're going to sub one reaction curve into the other and get Q1 star and Q2 star and get our Cournot equilibrium. This is more broadly known as our Nash equilibrium. So for Stackelberg, we have the same structure of our problem. In this case, firm one moves first and firm two moves second. For step number one, we're gonna take the first order condition of firm two's profit function, which is our second mover, and solve for the reaction curve. Step number two is that we're gonna sub the reaction curve of firm two into the profit function of firm one. Step number three is that we're gonna take the first order condition of firm one and solve for Q1 star. Step number four is that we're gonna sub Q1 star into firm two's reaction curve for Q2 and get Q2 star. So this is our video on how I would go and teach intermediate microeconomics two in five minutes. I hope this video helps, take care.